Hey, thanks for watching another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Today we're doing a multi-pass TIG weld on a big chunk of stainless steel. I pulled this out of the scrap bin. It was cut off of a big roller that we uh, shortened. And it's a big chunk of like uh, three inch thick stainless turned down to about two inch. And it's just begging to put a multi-pass weld on there. It's just like a big heavy wall socket weld. So I'm going to show a little walk in the cup technique today on this thing first and then we'll do some free handing as well later on in the final pass. The walk in the cup, the first pass is actually more like wiggling the cup like this, just wiggling it. And it leaves scratch marks like this so it's not actually tolerated in every industry. Like if you're doing fine tedious work for the semiconductor industry or fine smooth machine surfaces, it's just not tolerated so you have to learn how to freehand. But pipe fitters and uh, construction workers that weld pipe and whatnot uh, walk the cup like this routinely on, on socket welds. So that's what we're doing here. The first pass, again, we're just wiggling the cup back and forth. The reason it works so well is it maintains your torch angle. And each time you wiggle the, the, uh, the torch back and forth, it tends to move at about, about the same increment. So it gives you a nice even pattern on your weave ripples and stuff. It's a good technique if nothing's in the way, and that's the key, if nothing is in your way, because you're doing a lot of movement, and you're kind of, uh, you see, I'm speeding it up here. See, if there was stuff in the way, it would kind of uh, kind of hinder me a little bit, but I'm out here in the wide open, and it's an excellent technique to use in the wide open. Now we'll put the second pass on there, and the second pass is not just wiggling the cup. You're more like, it's like you were walking a 55 gallon drum across the floor back and forth. So you roll it one way and then you kind of have to tilt it the other way and then roll it back the other way. So if you've ever done that, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you've never done it, just get a get a, a glass and sit at your kitchen table and you can roll it and you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. Either way, it tends to put nice even ripples because again, it keeps your uh, it keeps your electrode angle the same. It keeps your arc pretty tight, and each time you move it, your your t your tendency is to move it at about the same increment each time, and so your travel speed's even, and there it makes your ripples even. It's a good technique. It's just not always possible to do it. All right, there is a total of three passes: a root pass, and then two passes on top of that. Now there are times when that wouldn't be enough, so we're going to go ahead and put three more beads on, on this. Now I'm using a rigid 17 air-cooled torch here. Not my favorite style torch, but sometimes you got to live with what you got. You can see i got to position my hand here to get the right angle, or if I'm coming in from this angle, I've got a, it's not a flex head, so I can't just get any angle I want, in other words. But you make do. This is another way of propping to, to make it around a joint like this. Okay, before we do the, the rest of it, this is a time for a TIG finger commercial. Now, you know, I make videos every week. I go to a lot of effort to do it, and the only way I can keep doing it is to make a buck every now and then. So, I'm promoting my TIG finger this week. That's my main product. Let me show you a few instances where it's good, and we'll get back to the rest of the video. Small diameter tubing like this, where you can't walk the cup, it excels. If you're a student and you're doing a bunch of joints like this, like this aluminum joint that gets hot really quick, it's hard to prop, it's hard to find a place to prop, it just slides right up like new money. Let's you make the weld. You don't have to prop two befores or four befores up to prop your elbow on. You just prop right on the metal and slides right up. Works like a charm. Outside corner joint like this, it's a perfect thing. See, I'm going to prop up here, turn the torch upside down and prop with my pinky. That's just one way of doing it. And it lets me move right on up that outside corner joint. Real nice. Okay. One more thing. The inside corner or even a T-joint, the heat gets trapped and it'll, it'll really cook your knuckles sometimes. So this is a good way of propping to keep your knuckles cool. And on... 4130 chromoly, like on a uh, if you're if you're welding a fuselage for a small aircraft, it's the ticket. Hard to find places to prop, and that stuff does get hot. Tig finger is the way to go. You can prop right next to the weld if you want. A steady hand does weld better. And when I was in welding school, I cut the thumb out of a tig glove, and that got me by. But now with this thing, is much better than the thumb out of a tig glove.
is some chromoly cope joints right here. I also even use it on stick welding sometimes for a joint like this, like small diameter pipe on a 6G. But okay, that's enough for the commercial. We're back to the back to the real deal now. Now, so I didn't I didn't really care for that other torch. This this torch is the bomb. It's a CK flex lock. This is an air cooled 17 style. The red thing there is actually a gas valve. I'm not using it today because I'm I've got a uh, a machine that doesn't require that. But you see, I can get any angle I want. In absolutely any angle I want with the flex lock torch. So if I want a prop like this, I got a real favorable angle there. You can see that I've got the stubby gas lens kit on this thing again. So this 17 style torch here actually feels more like a, a 9 air cooled as far as the size and the, uh, you know, what you can do with it. Now if I want to come in at, at it from this angle, that's no problem either. I just change the uh, swivel thing there and, and I got a good angle this way. All right, we're about to show some uh, we're about to show the arc shots on the next three passes. It's going to let me travel a long way right here with this torch angle and propping with the TIG finger. Now, by this time, I've got three passes on this chunk of stainless. You can imagine the heat is building up quite a bit. So, I didn't put a uh, I didn't put a thermometer on it or anything or use an infrared heat gun, but it's it's pretty it's getting pretty warm. That's really where the TIG finger excels. Okay, here we go. There's the first first pass, free handing on the last layer of beads. Now when you're not walking the cup, you gotta pay extra close attention to making your little motions the same. See, I slipped right there. But back up a little bit and uh, just carry on. It's not a problem. A little uneven ripple is not going to hurt anything. Now we'll come at it from the other angle here for the second pass. And again, I'm using uh, I'm using a one eighth filler rod here. I used 130 amps all the way out. I'm using a 332nd, which is a 2.4 millimeter electrode, 2% thoriated. I just happen to pick up a thoriated. I, I generally use 2% lanthanated for everything. And I'm using 20 CFH on the argon flow meter with a number 7 gas lens cup here. And that's the final cover pass. Okay, that's it for today. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can click on the blue link in the description box under the YouTube video, and you will go to a page that looks like this where you can get your TIG fingers. So order them now, and thanks for watching. Visit Welding Tips and Tricks and welding-tv.com.